Hi everybody and welcome. Today I am going to have a look at tables and by that I don't mean multiplication tables so no need to panic. I'm talking about the type of tables that we use to hold information. What we're going to do is have a look at a few types of simple tables. Some of them we use to take information from and others that we use to put information in. So let's make a start. Uh, let's have a look at this one here, a very simple, straightforward one. It is a table that has been drawn up to show which of the students in a class are left or right-handed. Now, a table will have two things. It will have columns going downhill and it will have rows going across. In fact, quite often you hear these talked about as two-way tables because there is information going in two different directions. Across the top here, we are being told whether they are left or right-handed and going down, we are being told whether they are boys and girls. So the table is, is combining two lots of information. This one's already been filled in for us, so we can see that in fact in this class there are three left-handed boys and eight right-handed and there is one left-handed girl and nine right-handed. Now, one thing you can do with a table like this is actually to add an extra row, an extra column on, like this. Now, this table is giving the same information, 3, 8, 1, 9, but it's giving us a chance to actually add up the totals so that you can have 11 in that column, telling us that there are 11 boys in the class altogether, 3 plus 8, Girls, one left-handed, nine right-handed, therefore there are ten girls in the class. Similarly, there are three left-handed boys, one left-handed girl, therefore four left-handed altogether. Eight and nine, seventeen right-handed students. You could, in fact, put another box there as a total. So, in total, there are eleven boys and ten girls, that's twenty-one adding down, but also across if there are four left-handed and 17 right-handed pupils altogether, that also adds up 21. And it's worth mentioning that not all tables are just for numerical information. Here maybe a garage is selling two models of a car and it is simply giving us options and telling us what the features of the cars are. So model A has alloy wheels and a sat nav and it gives us the engine size and model B the same information so that you are able to compare. There is no adding up um, because some of the information is in number form and some of it is words. Let's take a look at a different kind of chart and this one's very specific. It allows us to find distances between places and it is called a mileage chart. Quite simply, it works so that if you want to know what the distance is, let's say between Hull and Sheffield, Hull is the column here, so we go down the column for Hull, we go across from Sheffield, and where they meet is your answer. So Hull to Sheffield is 66 miles. Similarly, Manchester to York, Manchester, York, 71 miles and this kind of table is really used only for this one particular purpose it is a mileage chart sometimes it looks a little bit different to this layout and in fact can look like this the information is exactly the same in fact the numbers in the bottom left hand corner here are exactly the same but they've been repeated at the top here and the names are duplicated the principle is exactly the same if you want to know the distance from Hull to Sheffield, you go from Hull, take it across to the Sheffield box, and it's 66. So Manchester to Lincoln, Manchester across to Lincoln is there. But you can also go Lincoln to Manchester, Lincoln to Manchester, and of course it's exactly the same distance, so everything is duplicated. Let's move on to a situation where you are asked to design a table. Now, it's important to say that the absolute specific design is not so important. 
What is important is that you finish up with a table, or in this case, it's been described as a data sheet, which works for the question. Now, what do I mean by works for the question? Well, let's have a look at this question. Joe owns a sandwich shop. Customers can order their sandwiches on the phone. So he sells four different types of sandwich and he's got three different types of bread. So the customers could order any of these four sandwiches on any type of bread. What you need to finish up with in a question like this is a table whereby Joe can fill in simply the list of customer orders. Now, here is one possible, maybe the simplest solution. It does not mean that it's the only solution. So what I've designed here is a two way table. We have information along the top type of sandwich. We have information down the side, the type of bread. What I have done is left all the boxes in the middle empty because the question doesn't give us any numbers. It is asking us to design a data sheet for Joe to record the orders. So all he would do as an order came in, let's say the first phone call was somebody who wanted a ham salad on white, he would then put that in the appropriate box. The next one may be a cheese and tomato sandwich, which they want on wholemeal. So he would complete that. So he can simply input the information as the calls come in. So that is a data sheet aimed to do it. You may have put the sandwiches down the side, the bread along the top. Your design might be slightly different to this. As long as there is what is known as an input opportunity, a chance for Joe to input the orders into the sheet, you will be fine. What I want to do next, and I'll use a different example from this one, is to consider how Joe might actually record those orders in the simplest way. So let's look at tally. Let's imagine you have been asked to wander through a car park and make a note of the colour of all the different cars that are parked there. This is something you want to do nice and easily, nice and quickly as you are walking around. The easiest way to do this is to use tally. And the rule is that we are going to count using something which looks like a five bar gate. Sometimes you see line down that way. Sometimes in print it is straight across. The way we create this is to start by counting the number of cars. So let's say the first car is red, the second car is red, then you have a green one, a white one, a black one, another green one, then two black ones side by side, grey, a red one, two blue ones, another red one, and you've got a silver one and a green one. Now the next one is red. As soon as you see that you have four red ones previously, the fifth one, the line goes through and that gives you a set of five. Carrying on, the next one could be green and white and two greys. Then we're back to red. We start another set. So if the next two cars are blue, then we have a green one. There's your set of five. Another two reds, a blue one, set of five there. Another blue, a couple of silvers, two more reds, one, two. The next red will start another set. And the reason we do this, well, first, it's simple to do. You can count fairly quickly as you are wandering along. But also, when it comes to the end, they are easy to count. 5, 10, 11 red cars. Now, at the moment, this is called a tally chart. In fact, if we add an extra column and add a little bit more information, we can change it from being a tally chart. So here we are. I've added an extra column. It's called frequency, which simply means total number. So the frequency of red cars in this car park, 5, 10, 11 blue cars there were six five two three three and three as we went down through the colors it was a tally chart because we've added a third column it is now a frequency table so those are some of the common tables you might find in exam and we've looked at how you read them to take information out of them and also how you might complete a table yourself I hope you found that useful. If you have, as always, please hit the subscribe button so that you hear of any of my new videos. And if you could hit the like button as well, that would be great. Cheers.